What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm gonna show you how I made this. Beautiful, delicious, smoky, juicy, amazing. Direct heat pork steak turned into boudin, turned into cheesy egg rolls. Coming up. This is some meat. Ooh. Pat it dry. And what I got here is two big old pork steaks. Pick these up at the local grocery store. Just a big old chunk of pork butt. These are in fact boneless, but bone-in would work just as well. But they're looking nice and fatty, which is what we're after. Because traditionally when you're making boudin, it's a bunch of pork boiled down with some veg and aromatics, then mixed with rice, cased up, and there you go, you got some classic boudin. But whenever possible, I don't like to boil meat. It doesn't add much flavor. It's a pretty gross looking process. So we're gonna throw this on a barbecue pit. And in the past, I've used a pork butt on the offset for some classic pulled pork boudin. I've got another video on this channel where I made a brisket boudin. That was absolutely fantastic. But today we're throwing these big old pork steaks on the direct pit over there to get some really good flavor, some good color, and cook them until they're nice and tender. But first we need to get these seasoned up. And seasoning you use is really up to you. I mean, honestly, you don't even really need to season them at all because this is all going to get seasoned to taste at the end of the day. But we might as well start building those layers of flavor. So today I'm going on with some good old fashioned Chud's barbecue snake bite. Love this stuff. This is our spicy rub, but honestly it's not too hot. So you don't have to worry about that. But there's some jalapeno in there. And it's also got some vinegar powder in it, which gives it a really nice savory kind of sour touch, which sounds weird, but tastes and smells amazing. Highly recommend grabbing some of this from chudsbarbecue.com. If you haven't tried it yet, great on chicken, great on pretty much everything, but a nice healthy coating. And of course, folks, we're not gonna forget the sides. That'd be a rookie move. Smells so good. Almost smells like a buffalo sauce. I think an occasion rub would probably be a little more appropriate here, but this is the closest we get. Get it all up. Beautiful, and that is looking pretty much perfect to me. Let's go ahead and fire up the pit. And on the pit we go. We're gonna rock a pretty normal direct heat cook on these bad boys. Just about 300 degrees, 250, somewhere in that range. Going for a bit of a hot and fast today because I don't want this to take too long. But really we're just gonna let all the fat drip out of this, hit the coals, giving us that classic direct heat barbecue flavor. Build up some good color on the outside and just get them cooking. We're about an hour, hour and a half into this pork steak cook. Let's see how they're looking. Oh yeah, getting some good color on there. Go ahead and flip these over. Oh, that looks really good. Just some of that classic direct heat grilling going on. And it's also at this point, I'm gonna throw on some chicken livers. And I know not everyone's a fan of liver, but chicken livers are actually really tasty. And they're a traditional part of boudin. Well, actually I think pork liver is what's actually used, but uh, I couldn't find any of that. And I really like the flavor of chicken liver. So I'm just gonna pour these on. But of course, if you're actually gonna make boudin, you can make it however you like. And if you don't wanna add liver to it, you don't have to. But just gonna let those cook off to the side for a little bit until they're cooked through. And now that our pork steaks are flipped, let's go ahead and bust out a quick mop sauce. Start them going in with one stick of butter. And get that melting down. And once that's nice and hot and melted, and we go with one small onion, and let that cook down for just a couple minutes, get nice and soft. And once those have cooked down nicely, looking translucent, starting to take on a little bit of color, we can go in with some garlic that I'm gonna crush real quick. And in we go. One lemon, some thyme, some Tony's, some Louisiana hot sauce. Oh yeah, don't be scared. A shot of some Worcestershire sauce. About a cup of some white vinegar and a cup of some apple cider vinegar. And once that's back up to a simmer, go in with a little bit of Miller Lite. Ooh, yeah. Now I'm gonna let this cook away for just a couple minutes to make sure all these flavors are fully developed and softened and all that good stuff. And our slightly more Cajun than usual mop sauce is done. And now back over at the pit, every 20 minutes or so, we're just gonna come out and give this a little bit of a mop, help soften up that underside that got kind of crispy. Add this nice basting liquid to it, which will impart a lot of flavor. Of course, some of it will drip down and create some steam, which will help imbue everything with some of that lovely spicy tangy mop sauce and all that direct heat flavor. And I gotta tell you, it smells really good. And while I'm here, I'll go ahead and flip all these chicken livers over. Beautiful. This video is brought to you by Zbiotics. Zbiotics Pre-Alcohol Probiotic is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic designed by PhD scientists to help tackle that rough morning after a night of drinking. And basically what happens is when you drink alcohol, it becomes converted into a toxic byproduct in your gut. And that's the cause for those rough mornings and not just dehydration. But Zbiotics produces an enzyme to break down that toxic byproduct, making sure you feel great after a night out. And to use it couldn't be more simple. Simply make this your first drink of the night, give it a little shake, open her up, and it actually tastes really good. 
and then live your best life, drink responsibly, get plenty of sleep, and you'll wake up feeling better than ever. Now I'm gonna tell you, the 4th of July was not too long ago, and uh, let's just say there was a couple of beers and a lot of hot dogs consumed. But because it fell in the middle of the week, I still had work to do the next day. But luckily I took a Z-Biotics beforehand, and I got right back to work, and I felt great the next morning. Except for all the hot dogs that I ate. And with summer in full swing, whether you're hanging up by a pool, having a cocktail on a beach, or just having a couple of beers while you're firing up the old barbecue pit, I highly recommend keeping Z-Biotics around to be as productive as possible. So if you want to give Z-Biotics a try, go to zbiotics.com slash chudsbarbecue or scan the QR code on screen now, taking you to zbiotics.com or using code chudsbarbecue at checkout, you can save 15% off your first order. You can also sign up for a subscription using my link to make sure you're always prepared. Again, that's zbiotics.com slash chudsbarbecue or using code chudsbarbecue at checkout, you can save 15% off your first order. And Zbiotics has a 100% money back guarantee, so if for whatever reason you don't like it, you get your money back, no questions asked. Thank you, Zbiotics. We're about four hours total into this cook and these things are looking really good. Probing right around 180 internal, a little hotter in some spots. And if I was just making pork steaks to slice, I'd probably call these done right about now. But because we're turning these into boudin, I'm gonna wrap them up in foil and let them keep cooking until they're impossibly tender. But I've been mopping them every 20 minutes or so for the last bit and been flipping them over to get mop on both sides. And we're getting some really good direct heat color on there. Looking very good. And the smell is just intoxicating. So off these come got to love a good pork steak i just want to slice in right now hit these with a little bit more of our cajun -y buttery mop sauce and wrap them up and now back on the pit these go for just a little bit while we get everything else ready Next up, time to saute off our veg, starting by going in with a squeeze of some oil and adding our white onion, our celery, our bell pepper, our jalapeno, and the whites from some green onions. And just cook that down until everything is nice and softened. Also gonna go in with a big fat pinch of salt, just for good measure. And once nicely cooked down, cooked a lot of the water content out, everything's looking nice and soft, starting to take on some color, go in with our garlic. And cook this for another three, four minutes just until that gets nice and fragrant and nicely toasted. Beautiful, now set this aside to cool until we are ready to use it. After a couple hours wrapped up on the pit, these things are feeling pretty good. I temped them right around 205, so they should be nice and tender. But when I was probing them, they were still feeling a little bit tight, so we may have to chop these up. But either way, they're looking and smelling real good. Gotta love that, that fat on top is super well rendered. Nice and tender. Oops. Beautiful looking pork steak right there, folks. And a lot quicker cooked than a full pork butt. Tell you that much. A lot of juice in there. But will it pull? Yep. Wow. Still very hot. Probably should have let this rest a little longer. It did rest for a good 30, 45, but wrapped in foil on a 102 degree day. Doesn't really do all that much. But this is a good option if you're trying to make just a little bit less pulled pork than a full pork butt will offer. And of course, oh my God, that is so ridiculous. That vinegary, spicy mop sauce with that fatty pork. Tons of direct heat flavor on this. That is phenomenal. And no bones to worry about. Some really good looking pulled pork. There's a certain muscle in both of these that's looking particularly stringy, kind of like pork belly. And of course that fat cap all rendered down. Definitely making this again. Haven't made a good pork steak in a while. And just because I got here, I'm gonna go on with a little extra mop sauce. Add a little more acidity. Really lean into this direct heat boudin. Oh yeah, there we go. I mean, look at that. That is some good looking pulled pork right there. I mean, this alone is worth making, folks. I know you can't tell, but it's nothing like an offset smoker. Very tangy. Gotta love that chud box flavor. But we're not just making pulled pork, we're making boudin. So I'm going in with all of our softened veg, our smoky chicken livers. Just smoke those up to like 160, 170 internal, and then chopped them up. And get that all nice and mixed up. And now it's time to go in with the rice. And this is just some long grain white rice that I cooked in a rice cooker with a little Tony C's in the water. We're just gonna add as much as we see fit. And that's because you can 
make your boudin however you like your boudin, you know? Some people like it really meat heavy, some people like it more rice forward. It's really up to you. I usually aim for about a 50-50, but a lot of places you're gonna get boudin that's mostly rice. I think that's probably how this dish was invented, a good way to stretch a little bit of meat a long way by putting a lot of cheap things in there, like rice. Ooh, that rice is hot. The smells, guys. I'm telling you, you gotta make some boudin if you've never had it before. Because the best part about boudin is everything in here is fully cooked. So you can just go ahead and taste it and adjust. Oh my God, oh, that is so good. So at this point, we are looking really good. I'm liking the rice content. And for those keeping score at home, that was about five pounds of raw meat to about two, two and a half cups of raw rice. But again, you can dial it in however you see fit. And at this stage, it's looking good, it's tasting good. We do need to adjust a little bit. And again, because I have it and I'm kind of leaning into that direct heat barbecue boudin, I'm gonna go in with a little bit more mop sauce. I'm really liking the acidity that it brings and a little bit of heat. And also it's looking a little bit loose. So I'm just gonna add some liquid to it to make it a little bit tackier. Starting to taste really good. Couple final touches. I'm gonna go in with a little more Tony's just for some more salt and some more heat. Although it's pretty close, but that rice definitely needs to be seasoned well. And I'm gonna go in with a little bit of pork stock just to make it a little bit better bound. But of course, any kind of stock you got will work just fine. Or pretty much any liquid, really. Chuck a beer in there. I don't care. And almost forgot we're gonna add the greens from our scallions. Nice little freshness in there. I got you a fork. Brooke's about to leave for work, so she's gonna have a little sneak peek. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Is it good? Mm -hmm. What's the meat? Pork steak. Mm. And just like that, reach the consistency I'm looking for where it's kind of moldable, tasting great, salt levels are there, heat levels are there. I'm pretty happy with it. Now today we're making some boudin egg rolls, but I made a lot of boudin, so I'm going to case some of these up, just because I like having it on hand. And everybody loves it. Going on with some 28 mil hog casings today. Nothing to see here, folks. Just enjoying the day. Tie it off. Nice and tight. Snip the tip and we case. Oh, it's always weird case and boudin, folks. Great noises though. And just like that, all cased up. All right, folks, finally time to make some egg rolls. We got ourselves an egg roll wrapper. We've got ourselves a block of pepper jack cheese. And we're just gonna see how this comes out. Starting out, I'm gonna get a nice little mound of our freshly made boudin. Nice and moldable, makes this real easy. And usually when I do this, I make them way too big. So we'll see if tradition upholds. That seems all right, you know? Take a slice of some pepper jack here. Actually, I'm gonna make a little sandwich. So I'm gonna pop that in the middle and then kind of bury it. Because a cheesy boudin egg roll just sounds like something that I should be putting into my body. And now we're gonna go ahead and start to roll this up. Got some egg wash on the side here. Just make sure everything sticks together. Oh geez. And now we're just gonna roll it up like a little tiny burrito. Oh, I ripped it. That's okay. Nice and tight. And there we go. I think that looks pretty good. This is the third time I'm making egg rolls on the channel. So I gotta be better at it by now. Cause I usually fail on the first one and that one still doesn't look ideal. So luckily we got plenty more to work on. And if you haven't seen my other egg roll videos, I did one with some whole hog and some crispy pork skin, which was absolutely fantastic. I did another one that was buffalo chicken basically a buffalo chicken dip that was really good crispy chicken skin on that one i'm gonna go for two smaller slices this time hopefully help with the melting process and roll it up shape it while we go egg rolls are fun especially barbecue egg rolls and everybody loves a good egg roll Beautiful, and now we repeat. All right, after knocking out several of these, I think I got it figured out. Thin piece of cheese, cut that in half, double up for extra cheese. And then it's kind of like making nigiri, where you just take it and you form it into the middle in your hand, fully encase it. Just pressing and shaping. And really the wrapper's so thin that your egg roll is gonna be as big as your little boudin turd here. So then once you got a nice little log ski here, pop that down, just egg wash the whole thing just to be safe because we don't want this to explode in the deep fryer. And then roll, tuck in the edges, in the edge, fold that up, fold that in, egg wash this seam, and then roll it up nice and tight. And then you can just kind of roll it, just to make sure it's nice and round. You got yourself a beautiful little egg roll. Let's deep fry some. Over the deep fryer, got this oil fired up to about 350 degrees, and we're simply just gonna drop these bad boys in. Boop. Really shouldn't take long on these. Again, everything is fully cooked, so we're just trying to warm it all through and get some lovely crispiness on the outside. And hopefully it's enough heat to melt the cheese. And after just a couple minutes out, these come looking absolutely beautiful, nice and crispy. Lots of good bubbles on there. Pretty happy about that. And there it is, folks. We got some beautiful smoky boudin made of pork steak on the direct heat barbecue pit turned into some cheesy boudin egg rolls. And of course, we got some spicy mustard on the side. And uh, yeah. 
yeah, I'm ready to dive on in because this looks and smells so good. Gotta say, I'm pretty happy with how everything came out. These are a little bit darker than I was anticipating. I thought that might be from the egg wash, but I'm not really sure, but they're definitely crunchy, definitely really hot. So I think they're gonna taste really good. As for this boudin, I just threw it back on the tread box for a little bit to crisp those skins up, make sure everything is warmed through and it looks very good and I'm ready. Looking good on the inside. Nice and crunchy, yet nice and soft. Gotta love that, but while I'm here, <laughs> oh, that is so good. That is a truly fantastic boudin, you know? It's smoky, it's porky, it's got all that rice in there, which makes it super soft. And if you've never had boudin, I know rice in a sausage sounds pretty weird, but once you have it, it is like the most comforting thing ever. Which is why I keep making videos about it, because I genuinely love it. And if you haven't tried it, you definitely have to. But a good amount of kick, the veggies in there, but it's not like too healthy tasting, if you know what I mean. But this one in particular, with the direct heat flavor and the mop sauce in there, adding that little vinegar punch, really is a fantastic fantastic bite. Mm. Oh, ah, that's so good. But we're not here to talk about that beautiful boudin. We got to try this egg roll. Whoa. Oh my God. The cheese. I forgot about the cheese. Mm. That is absolutely fantastic. Mm. The cheese is perfectly melted. It's warmed all the way through. It's gooey. It's crunchy. It's savory. A little bit of spice, but nothing too powerful. And then it's crunchy at the same time because of the egg roll. That's ridiculous. Mm. Egg rolls with a cheese pull? What more do you need in life? Let's try it with a little mustard on it, shall we? Good board. Uh -huh. mm. That's good. The mustard is honestly a perfect accompaniment. This is spicy brown mustard, but you gotta love it. Mm. Oh. Forget everything I said about how good the sausage was because in egg roll form, it is 10 times better. That is just so good. The crunch, it's deep fried. I mean, come on, it's like cheating. That smoky pork mixed with that deep fried crusty exterior, match made in heaven, folks. Oh, I could eat an alarming amount of that, and I probably will. I mean, what's not to like here, folks? This is just indulgence at its finest. Mm, so good! You know, with boudin, you've got really soft cooked pork with softened vegetables and soft rice, and you get a little bit of snap from the casing, which is really nice, but in boudin ball form, which I have another video for, or in egg roll form, you just get that textural contrast that really makes it a perfect dish. And if I'm being completely honest, I think I'd take these over the boudin balls any day of the week. Just easier to eat. So good! Boop! Mm. But before I eat an embarrassing amount of that, I think it's time for the official taste test. Yeah, but, 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 but. All right, y'all, and that is it. That is how to make some absolutely fantastic smoky direct heat pork steak boudin turn into cheesy, crispy, smoky egg rolls. I highly recommend giving this one a try, you know? Whatever leftover barbecue you've got, making boudin is a no-brainer. And whether or not you have the sausage-making gear, turning it into boudin balls or egg rolls like this is definitely something you should make at least once in your life because it is so tasty, and I'm really glad I made extra. But all that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button, YouTube know by dropping a like on this video. If you give this recipe a try, for yourself be sure to tag me on instagram at chud's barbecue i love to see what y'all are cooking big shout out to all the patreon members thank you for supporting team chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos and until the next time i see you please go cook something outside peace